It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Hmm? <clears throat> Amen. It seems like we're fewer and fewer today. That's all right, too. Praise God. Uh, you know, it only took two. It only took two to have a revival in Acts chapter 16. It only took two to have a revival. And you know what brought the revival? Praise brought the revival. If you want to look at it, look at, uh, look at Acts 16 when uh, Paul and Silas was uh, preaching Jesus and going through a city and this woman kept taunting them and said, these are the men of God. I mean, he, she wasn't lying. She was just confessing, these are the men of God, you know. And so uh, Paul got tired of it after a day or so and turned around and cast the spirit out of her. The, the people of the town that was profiting off of her, as she was a soothsayer, I mean, uh, they were profiting off of her. They got mad, and they had Paul and Silas beaten and put in jail. Huh? I mean, Paul and Silas was just going about doing good, doing good, preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know? They was preaching Jesus Christ resurrected. And the resurrection has power. Resurrection is just not a word. Resurrection is power. Power. You know, there were people in that prison where they locked Paul and Silas, chained them to a wall. They were all kinds of prisoners in that jail. There was a jailer in that jail that was there to keep the prisoners intact and chained. Huh? Look at the person down your, down your aisle there and if you got somebody down your aisle. <laughs> if not, look at somebody ahead of you or behind you and say, their praise at the midnight hour, the darkest hour, huh? their praise, Paul and Silas's praise caused a great earthquake to happen. The people that didn't want to be there were there for a purpose. Huh? They were there to see the resurrection power of the risen Savior demonstrate his response to praise. Huh? I mean, they didn't want to be there, but they were there for a purpose. And the praise of Paul and Silas, two people, caused a revival to break out in the prison because the, all the doors of the prison was broke open. And the prisoners could have came out and been free. But I want to tell you something. When the presence of God comes, you ain't going to be, I mean, you're going to be sitting back watching and trying to figure out what's going on. Hmm? I'm telling you, praise is powerful. And you got a reason to praise. It's even more powerful because if you got a reason to praise, you're doing it in the spiritual realm and you're getting God's attention. You know, God sent me to tell you that God left his, left his seat in heaven to come right here today to minister to you as you praise him today. You got a problem? You got your in bondage? You got, you got circumstances surrounding you that, that aren't in, in right with, with what's going on with you? You may be sick. Somebody you know might be sick. You might be broken, busted. Huh? But let me tell you something. When Jesus shows up, he can set you free from all the troubles of the world. Because you see, to be born again is to step into another realm. Spirit realm. There's two ways, there's two ways that you can live life. After the seed of Adam or after the seed of Christ. Huh? Two ways you can live life. Every morning is brand new in Christ. Huh? 
I'm not trying to stay here. I'm not trying to, to get you to stay here. I'm not trying to get you to have mansions or cars or uh, uh, stuff. I'm not trying to get you to see that those things are, are more important, that those things are more important than the things God has to offer. They're not. They're not. It's, it's, sometimes it's hard to pray, God, your will and not mine. Sometimes it's hard to pray that. Huh? I mean, <laughs> those guys in prison chained with Paul and Silas probably praying, not my way, I don't want to be in here. But whenever the chains fell off and the doors were open, I'll tell you what, I bet you there's some celebrating there. I bet you Paul and Silas wasn't the only ones praising God after that event. Huh? I bet you there's a revival went on. Hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. You ready for a change? You ready for the change to fall off? Huh? Are you ready for the bondages of, of uh, life in this physical realm to be put on the back burner and be born into the spiritual realm where there's power Power, you know what the power is? The power is life. The power is life. Let's all stand and, that can stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Pray for that one that you that you know needs uh, the hand of God moving on them. Pray for them. You know, as you pray for them, God will answer your needs. I want to pray for Kathy as she's traveling. She had to go to Atlanta to get some continued education for her job. So I want to pray for her. Others that aren't here, we just pray that, that God meet them right where they're at. Bless them. Bless them abundantly. Heal them. Save their lost. Cause a revival to break out in all of our lives. Father, we just submit ourselves to you. We ask you for an anointing today to break all the yokes. Lord, we pray that you would cause the chains to be broken that, that, that bind us to this, uh, this natural existence of life here today. We pray that you'd help us to do the next right thing. Lord, wherever we're at in life, we pray that you'd help us to do the next right thing in relationship to eternity, knowing that, that the supernatural surrounds us right now. Lord, we praise you and magnify you. We glorify you because the grave couldn't hold you down. It ain't going to hold us down. One day when it's all finished and, and you say, come up here, you blessed of the Lord, the graves are going to bust open and those that are in Christ are going to be raised to a new being, new reality. Lord, we praise you for that new reality that we can walk in and live in right now. We give you the glory for it. We pray you bless everyone, heal the sick, save the lost. Renew our spirit. Renew our strength in you, and we'll give you the glory for it in Jesus Christ's holy name. Everyone said amen. Amen. You love the Lord today? Amen. You know, Scripture says we walk by faith and not by sight. So what does that really mean? That means that uh, sometimes we got to ignore what our eyes see and what our feelings feel and and we and if we could move that over into we praise by faith and not by sight and David said bless the Lord O my soul he was commanding his own soul to praise the Lord because maybe he wasn't really feeling like it at the time so sometimes we have to offer that sacrifice of praise and then he is he inhabits those praises and then we feel his presence and we feel his joy amen
I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder
feel and say thank you. Love for all that you have done. And I wonder, I'll reach a heaven sweet show. Oh Lord, can I say once more, I've got so much. Good time in the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Spirit rain down, rain down. Oh, comforter and friend, I will need your touch again. Holy 
spirit now Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't run off too far. Mm. Mm. Are you excited about being in the house of God today? Yeah. Amen. You know, David said, I was excited whenever they said it's time to go into the house of the Lord. Right. You know, I told you a week or so ago, there wasn't no Solomon's temple built at that time. So that house that he was talking about was an inner place, inner sanctuary, where the Holy Spirit abide. You see, this coming Tuesday, it'll be the, today's the 9th, tomorrow's the 10th, the 11th of, uh, of July, which would be Tammuz, I don't remember, I didn't look it up, but I think it's the 17th of Tammuz or something like that, is uh, the date on the Hebrew calendar, but on Tuesday is when is when um, they worship the golden calf. You see, I gotta, I gotta recant. I've said before that the ninth of all is when they worship the golden calf. But actually, actually, what happened on the ninth of all that cursed the Jews was they believed the report of the ten spies that said we ain't able to do what God said we can do. Hmm. That was what happened on the ninth of all, which is three weeks later than the day that they worshiped the golden calf, which occurred next Tuesday on the Hebrew calendar. Isn't that something? 
Hmm? You know, all those things that, that they did happened in a year time frame. In the book of Exodus, took a year time frame. And then on the first day of the second year is when they dedicated the, the tabernacle in the wilderness. First day of the second year is when they uh, dedicated the house of God in, in the wilderness. Now, there was a tabernacle that David could go in in Shiloh that he made a place for in Jerusalem where he reigned. So he could have been calling the house of God, is the presence of God, you know, in the wilderness that they carried with them. They carried with them. You know, in Numbers chapter 13 is where the where the, where the 12 spies were sent out to, to spy out the promised land. Spy out the promised land. You know, when, when Moses sent them out, they had, just, they had just worshipped the golden calf. And God restored those that repented. Amen. Destroyed those that didn't repent. 3,000 to be exact. And then on the day of Pentecost, God saved 3,000 right there with the, at pre, the preaching of Peter. It's amazing to me how that the Word of God is so tightly fit together and speaks so mightily, so mightily to everything that goes on today even. You know, if you look at the terminology, I have told you last week we talked about uh, Genesis as 50 chapters and how that, that, that you have to come to a realization that, that, that it's an inspired word of God that Moses wrote down looking back to a window 340 years past <clears throat> when Moses was born about 340 years and it showed up about 420 years prior. So there's a 400-year gap there in between, uh, between Joseph and Moses. 400-year gap. There's a 400-year gap between Ma uh, Malachi and Matthew. You know, the, the Bible records my genealogy. Hmm? The Bible records my genealogy. You know, you've ancestry.com. Go to the God, the Word of God.com. My genealogy. If you're born again, it's your genealogy. Huh? That's true. If you're born again of the Spirit, then it, it's your genealogy too. You can carry right on from, from Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 3. Matthew chapter 1 covers the genealogy of Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus. Luke 3 covers the genealogy of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And it goes all the way back to Genesis. These genealogies don't start in, in, in the New Testament, don't start in the prophets. It starts in Matthew, the genealogy of Mary, the genealogy of Joseph, the stepfather. Do you know what the word Exodus actually means? Exodus, you know, it says it in its, in its uh, uh, vocal speaking. Exodus means the way out. The way out. Genesis tells you how we got in. Huh? And begins to tell you how God's planning on bringing us out. You know, there was a, a character like Jesus in the Old Testament. There's a Jesus in the New Testament, and there was a character in the Old Testament that lined up with the same description as Jesus in the New Testament. His name was Joseph. Doesn't say anything about any problems Joseph had. Even when he was in a pit, he didn't curse God. Huh? Huh? 
Let me pray over the word and pray over the offering. You pray over the offering and pray over the word too, Rick. Okay, they're probably already there, except for Sarah. Arabella's not probably going to go. <clears throat> I forgot my tithing. Would you car. stand with us as we pray, please? Pray over my tithe that's in the car, and I'll get it after church. <laughs> Blessed Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, and Father, for this body of people, we ask you to bless each and every one that's here today. Father, we ask you to bless the word and anoint it, that we'll be able to receive it into our hearts and our lives. Father, just we thank you for this tithe and offering that's come forward. We ask you to multiply it to meet the need of the hour. And all these things we pray in your mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. If you look at the scripture, Exodus ends with uh, verse 38, chapter 40, verse 38. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and a fire was upon it by night. In the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. If you turn the page to the first chapter of Leviticus, it starts out with Anne. So there's not a breaking point between the, the last chapter and the last verse of Exodus and the beginning of Leviticus. You know why? Because Exodus talks about the way out, the tabernacle in the wilderness, and why that, that things were done the way they were done because there is a, a, a rule of man and there's a rule of God. There's two rules. One of man, I don't agree with all of man's rules. Hmm? I'm not in agreement with all of them. I've been rebellious over most of them most of my life. But you can't argue with God's rule. You can't argue with it. But if you don't know it, you can err in it because you don't know it. David prayed that, that, that God would, would create in him a new heart that he wouldn't sin against God. I mean... That ought to be our, all of our attitudes, that we not sin against our God. But the reason we sin against our God is because we have our God in a box, in, a, in our pocket that we call on whenever we get in trouble. Huh? I'm telling you, we, we need to dissect the Word of God. You see, uh, if you look at this, uh, this Bible like a history book or something, but I want to tell you something. If you look at like what we've been talking about, this is my genealogy. Huh? I picked up my genealogy, and I study my genealogy because I want to know who I'm kin to. Huh? You know, you have a relationship born in this world. Why? I don't know. God has a plan to bring us to a place to know who he is and who we are. Why was Joseph brought into the world? He, God never spoke to Joseph in an audible voice. The scripture doesn't imply that. God spoke to other men throughout the scripture, but he never spoke to Joseph. He gave Joseph dreams and visions. He gave Daniel dreams and visions. But he spoke to other men in the Bible. Why did he not do it to Joseph? <clears throat> Joseph was a type of Christ. Joseph had a, had a living uh, life relationship with the God of all creation. You see... You see, when, when Jacob left, uh, left uh, 
Canaan at that time and went to Syria to his father, to his mother's brother's house, Laban, and took a, two wives. Actually, 20 years passed. In the 20th year, Joseph was born. And he was on, he was born on the way out. Huh? Ain't that something? He was born on the way out. And then, you see, it tells you in, in the book of Genesis, it, it tells you, uh, let me look it up. It tells you in Genesis chapter 15 why the Jews were put in captivity in, in, in Egypt. You, did you ever wonder why they wound up in slavery in Egypt? Hmm? It says here in verse 13 of Genesis 15. Now Genesis 15 is where, where God spoke to, to Abram. And, and Abram prepared a, a, a sacrifice, split the animals, laid the birds in a hole in a path, and then he ran the, ran the varmints off from eating the, eating the dead carcasses till God could come down and consecrate a covenant. You know what a covenant is? It's a marriage relationship. <clears throat> so here he came, God came down and covenant with man without him even being a part of it because Abraham went to sleep, a deep sleep, the Scripture says. But listen, why was Joseph taken to Egypt in bondage? Verse 13 says, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety. Now this is in Genesis chapter 15. You wonder why we got the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Wonder why we got them where I hear. And Ab and he said unto Abram, This is God, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Egypt. And shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Now God tell God's telling Abram, a fact of things that's coming in the future, prophetically, in Abram's time. It's telling them. It's what's going to happen. Why is it going to happen? Read on. Verse 16 says, well, let's read 14 and 15 too. That way we won't miss anything. And also that nation whom they shall serve Will, will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Now, you see, we, we see the ten, the ten um, um, uh, plagues that, was, that befell Egypt, but, you know, if you look at those, all ten of those plagues, they were not uh, just God stretching his muscles. It was God showing the Egyptians that he was more powerful than any god they had. They worshiped many gods. And every one of these ten uh, uh, miracles that God performed for the, for the Jews was to demonstrate his power over all things. Huh? Verse 15, And thou shalt go to, the, to thy father in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Verse 16 is telling you why they were in bondage for 400 years. 400. 40. 400. 4,000. If you see the connection in it, if you, if you look into the supernatural of it, you know the definition of everything has so many different uh ways to interpret it, then, then, then you understand that, that for 400 years, 
4,000 years and then another judgment, which we're going to ex experience, okay? But the fourth generation, but in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. That's God telling Abraham that they're coming back to Canaan in 400 years. Fourth generation. He's defining a generation as 400 years right here. And then the, the finish of verse 16 says, For the iniquity of the Ammonites is not yet full. The Amorites occupied Canaan. And their iniquity has not been full. Now, God could have left Abraham and the 70 that, got, that Abraham brought with him to Egypt after Joseph had put the money back in the, in the bags of the, the, the 10 brothers that put him in the pit. Huh? You see, it's, Peter said, that, think it not strange when you come into divers' temptations and troubles. Because God's going to show you something, that he is your deliverer. He is the reason that we have, have life and have the creation that we have. Because John starts out his gospel, within the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And the Word was with God. So, I mean, what, what, what confusion does the world have whenever they look at God and, and, the, de and the explanation of God? They don't know the Word of God because they, they ain't living under the genealogy that I'm living under or you're living under if you're born again. Genealogy means that I am born again. John 3 said that uh, Jesus told Nicodemus, except you be born again, you ain't going to see heaven. And Nicodemus, I mean, was a teacher. And Jesus said, and you call yourself a teacher of God, of God's word, his rule of God, the Old Testament, the prophets, you call yourself a ruler of God. And, and you don't understand because Nicodemus said, how can I enter back into my mother's womb and be born again? Huh? All this is done to open us into an into a eternal relationship with God. Exodus is a way out. In, in, in every Hebrew Jewish household, they observe Passover, have, do, or Passover because at the Passover is the tenth plague on Egypt. When, when the firstborn of Egypt died that one night, and it was nighttime, but the Holy Spirit went through Egypt. You know, blood is, is almost impossible to see in the dark. Hmm? I don't advise you to look or try. <laughs> But blood is almost impossible to see in the dark. But the Holy Spirit passed over every house in the dark that had the blood of the Lamb placed upon it. Huh? Praise God. Hallelujah. So now we know why the Jews were in captivity because they were put in a place of increase in Goshen, the best land in Egypt to prosper and be blessed and then be in captivity and bondage. I mean, I was, I wrote down my notes. October the 12th, 1986. October the 12th, 1986 was the greatest day of my life. Because on that day, I was broken. I was, I was put on a path of my redemption. I was introduced to a spiritual realm. I don't know what the word was being preached. I was sitting on a Sunday morning and about halfway back in the sanctuary. The preaching was going on. The Holy Spirit was moving throughout the house. And I want to tell you something. I want to see the Spirit move in this house like it did then too. And it has in this house since. 
But it's not going to come unless we get into the agreement of the Holy Spirit and the, and the Spirit of God has authority and rule over everything that goes on in the house, outside the house, and all through the people of God. We got to realize we're brothers and sisters in Christ. We are to realize that I should prefer you before me. There's no big you's and little me's. There's no big me's and little you's. Then we'll see the hand of God move. Then we'll walk in the spiritual realm like Paul did. It didn't take, it didn't take a, a, a tremendous cathedral and all the things to go on in, in, in Acts chapter 16 when, when, when Paul and Silas was put into a jail cell, chained to a wall, been beaten. It was them coming to an agreement of praising God because they knew where they were going. The circumstances didn't hinder them praising God because they knew who they were and where they were going. They had had an encounter with the living God. Paul saw the glorious light of God on, in Acts 9 whenever he had the Damascus Road experience. If you ain't had a Damascus Road experience, you need to pray for an encounter with God. That you could be a part of the genealogy of God that, that, that I mean, that Paul experienced, that, that the whole Christian world has experienced, born-again experience. Uh, you see, in, in Abraham, you see, in Abraham, God visited man, not in, not in the... Not in the Old Testament before the flood. God was there. God watched what went on with the fallen angels that came down and, and, and did what they done, and, and they're still doing it. You know what their agenda is? To destroy you. To destroy the world that God has created for us. I mean, when, I mean we... We get caught up in the idea that someday, somewhere, God's going to call. We're going to go up and be with God forever. No, we're coming back. Huh? We're coming back to rule and reign with God for a millennial reign. And then it didn't, it didn't give us a definition of, of after the white throne judgment, but, but we know that we'll be with God. If you're in the genealogy of God. If you're not in the genealogy of God, you're in the genealogy of Adam that perished due to the world. It's like I told Pastor Friday this week on the phone. He said, I wonder about this, I wonder about that. I said, you, you are the, I mean, it's available. Go on YouTube. Google the lost books of the Bible. Huh? The books of the giants, the, the book of Adam and Eve. The book of Adam and Eve starts out with Adam and Eve being escorted out of the Garden of Eden. A flaming sword placed over the entrance to the Garden of Eden, which I told you hovers, mist. In the mist of the garden, the mist means it hovers. When, when Satan deceived Adam and Eve, he took, that, he took dominion over that realm. The chaos outside, the chaos outside the Garden of Eden, they were escorted into the earth that they were created from, found, found a habitat in a cave near the Garden of Eden. The entrance of the Garden of Eden tells you this in the book of Adam and Eve. Lost books of the Bible says that, that when, when Adam realized his demise, it hurt him so bad that he actually mourned himself to death, died in that cave, died in that cave. And, and, and it goes on to say that Eve repented so desperately and cried out to God so desperately that the Spirit of God raised Adam from the dead. Huh? The book of Enoch is mentioned in the New and the Old Testament, both. The book of Jasher is mentioned in the, in, the, in the New Testament. I mean, these are credible historical books that have been passed down through the, through the, the, through the 
ancestral line of the creation of God. I mean, God, I mean, if you go to Proverbs 25, 2, it says it's for, it, it is for God to hide a thing, but for kings to search it out. I mean, it's not hidden from you. It's hidden for you because Satan is out to destroy the things of God. But God put them in a place that once we're born to the Spirit, we'll look in the spiritual realm for our rewards because we're not like we were. We're not the same. We're, we're not deter we don't, the world don't determine my destiny. From dust I came, to dust I'll return. But my living soul is in God as I am a descendant of the Most High God created in His image. Whoa, glory. Somebody in this place ought to be excited. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Walked off and run off and left my paper. You see, there's a drama from there to here. There's a drama from my birth to my rebirth, the drama that almost took me. The drama of life that, that had, me, had me blinded to eternity, living in the physical, hurting in the physical, hurting others in the physical. Then I was born of the spiritual realm and, and I was a babe. You know, we, we wonder why the scripture says, except you become as a little child, you're not going to see God. I mean... <laughs> It's like that scenario of, of Nicodemus in John 3. That doesn't mean that being a little child blah, 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 doesn't mean sucking on a bottle. It means that, that children are like sponges. They soak up stuff because they know they don't know it all. Huh? Whenever we come to the reality that in the flesh we don't know it all, but it's available to us as we have need to know it. God has a has need to know because there's a time, there's a time that he has appointed. You see, this when in Genesis 15, God is telling Abram about a time that it wasn't spoke of again. But when they need to know, and Moses showed up, huh? And Moses showed up. You know, Moses killed an Egyptian and for 40 years is raised in Pharaoh's house, educated by Pharaoh's education system, had the access to the Sumerian text, to the Babylonian text, to the Egyptian text, because Pharaoh was not some just fly-by-night king or nothing. He was considered a god by the world standards. Huh? So it wasn't that Moses had, a, had, I mean, God had a plan that Moses would be raised and educated, that he'd have the foresight and the relationship. I mean, he stood before the burning, the flaming bush. I mean, he stood before the flaming bush. He spoke to God and spoke, God spoke back to him. Huh? Sent him on a mission. And he had five excuses why he couldn't go do it. I mean, how many excuses do we put before God why we can't walk in the Spirit, why we can't be born again of the Spirit, why we can't do the same thing Paul and Silas did? Praise him no matter what our circumstances is. Praise him because I know where I come from and I don't know where I'm going. Woo! Thank God I know where I'm going. I pray you know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, today's the day to find out. Get your GPS out. Huh? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I was, I was, I was in a pit of my own making before 1986. I became a servant to my own sins. You did it too. I mean, God's no respect or person. We all born of a woman. Born of a woman. See, the amazing thing 
is when we become born of God. Huh? El Shaddai. El Shaddai means the many-breasted one. You see, the devil would have you throw your eternal existence away for a temporal gain or knowledge of this world right now. But you wouldn't trade the things that God has for you if you knew what they were. They were, I mean, parables in the, in the gospel said there was a treasure in a field. But once, when Jesus said there was the, that treasure, when a man found that treasure, he went and sold everything that he had to buy that field because of the treasure. Huh? Nothing in this world is worth giving up what I've gained. Nothing. I was imprisoned to death. Now that's a treacherous place to be. You see, Paul and Silas could have looked at their circumstances being beaten and chained to a wall in a, in a Roman rule uh, district uh, uh, because they had been preaching a God over the God of the Romans. When they said, uh, they they uh, they killed Christians, first century Christians, second century Christians because they denied that that Caesar was God, the God above God. They wouldn't do it. They gave their lives for that. They gave their life for that truth, and I can't deny that truth either. You, I mean, this truth is, is, in, is in the spiritual realm. It's, it's, it's hidden for us, not from us. Huh? Imprisoned to death. Had a death wish. Satan almost had me. You see, there's two rules. God's rule, then man's rule. We all know what man's rule is. We've lived under the tyranny of it all of our lives. Let me, let me just introduce you right now, and, and I want to introduce you to, to God's rule. Go with me to Romans chapter 6. We're going to spend a little bit of time here in Romans chapter 6. I didn't leave any... Did I leave any loose ends on what we were talking about, about Genesis and Exodus? I mean, you could go through that for, you know, and it's great information. The information there in the Old Testament is to lead us to the New Testament rule of God. That's what it's all there for. It is a way out. And Jesus Christ is the only way in. Only way in. Genesis, I mean Romans chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 3. Now Paul was telling the, the church in Rome. Rome, Italy. He's telling them. Well, let me go back to verse 1. And what shall we say then? Shall, shall we... Continue in sin that grace might abound? God forbid. How shall we that are, that are dead to sin? Alive. Live any longer therein. God forbid. How shall we that are dead in sin live any longer therein? Verse 3, know ye not that, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death? Baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. You know, that's the... Uh, I was telling Bronson out there about this picture of the biker, about what I what the Lord has showed me a week or so ago about about what broke the the old biker's heart. Seeing, was it seeing a man hanging on a cross? 
I don't think it was. I think that he saw his face in the man hanging on the cross because he's our substitute. He took our place. Okay? Baptized into his death that, that like as Christ was, risen, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, raised up by the, I mean, born of God. What we said a minute ago, born of God, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. My rewards ain't in earthly vessels. My rewards are in heavenly, heavenly promises of God for those that are faithful to him. And we all fall short of that. Verse 5 says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Resurrection. Every time you see resurrection, can relate the word power to it. Huh? I mean, resurrection means power, life power. I mean, could you imagine being beat? I mean, Isaiah 52 says that Jesus was crucified. He was beaten before he was crucified, and he wasn't even recognizable. Why wasn't he recognizable? Because whoever would see the, the, the sacrifice of Jesus had to see themselves on the cross. Huh? I mean, this is the way out. Huh? Resurrection means power. On the third day, God himself raised himself, the Father, from the dead. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that uh, henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, I don't prefer my agenda, I prefer his agenda. Not my will, but your will be done, Lord. Use me. My purpose is to see someone come to truth. Huh? I'm not going to bring somebody to truth if I ain't walking in truth myself. If I ain't exercising the, the resources that, that, that God has placed before me that I not be uh, uh, destroyed by ignorance. Huh? I mean... We need each other. We need each other. We need to prefer one another before the, for ourselves. That some might be saved. I mean, if we want our family to be saved, we can't go around murmuring and complaining like they did in the wilderness for 40 years. We can't go around murmuring and complaining when trouble comes. We can't go about murmuring and complaining when pain comes. We got to exercise the ability to, re to walk in the resurrected power, though I... Paul said uh, that it'd be gain for him to die, but not that, that he would die, but that he'd live that we might see Christ in him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. Live in him. Verse 9, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death have no more dominion over him. What was the curse? When Adam and Eve sinned against God, disobeyed God, the curse was death. Now right here in Romans chapter 6 is telling us that death has no more dominion over us. Because we're resurrected in Christ. You can't be resurrected once you're dead. Verse 10 says, For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but uh, that in 
that he liveth. He liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed into sin, but alive into God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 12 says, let, no, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it uh, in the lust thereof. There neither yet ye sh your, neither yield your members as in, in instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law. What we talked about before, the law of man. We are now under the law of God. Genealogy changed. Genealogy change, huh? I'm not the man I was. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Grace, grace. Verse 15 says, What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace, God forbid. I'm about to get there. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servant to obey, his, his servants are, yea, ye are? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servant to obey, his servant ye are to whom ye obey? Whether to sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Now, now, Abraham was not a perfect man. Abraham lied, was a liar. He lied to Pharaoh about who his wife was. I mean, and, and, and gave her up, to, to, and God had to intervene. God told Pharaoh that this is another man's wife. I mean, God intervened. God's intervening for us right now. He's intervening for you right now. Verse 18, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now ye yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness." You know, we've went over the meaning of holiness many times. Holiness means set apart for, set apart for God, a purpose. I mean, holiness could, could go, I mean, this is like this pulpit is set apart. It's, it's, it's set apart for a ministry pulpit station. I mean, it's set apart for that. You can use it for a speaking platform. But it's set apart, so it's it's wholly set apart. It's like the the furniture in the in the tabernacle was anointed and set apart. I mean, they were carried off, and they brought a curse upon. In Daniel, they brought a curse upon Belshazzar, the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, when they brought the 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 temple the 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 cups from the temple to drink from at the party when the very night the, the Persians and the Medes overthrew Babylon. Huh? I mean, for me, for me to defile what God has set apart, to do anything other than the will of God, 
it's, it's defiling the holiness that God paid for by his own blood. You understand that? So you're holy set apart if you're born again. That goes into honor. I mean, are you going to honor the God that, that is going to resurrect you to life or resurrect you to eternal death? I mean, that's the question you got asked. And if you, and if you don't make that decision, you do make that decision. Huh? I mean, you, there's no escape of God's rule. I mean, you might have escaped the, the laws of man many times by speeding or doing things that was against the law. I've escaped those things, but you ain't going to escape God's rule because God's present all the time. I mean, he, he's, he's passionate because of his love. He wants you to, the, the things that, that, that you do wrong, he, there's, there's consequences. You reap what you sow. I mean, he's not, a, he's not a Santa Claus that races your bad things out. I mean, he does forgive. First John uh, chapter 1, verse 9 says, if you, if you are faithful to confess, he's faithful and just to forgive. But it don't take away what you're going to reap from what you did. There's consequences. Huh? Where did I get to? Verse 20. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then is in those things, there, wherefore ye are now ashamed. For the end of those things is death. 22, but now being made free from sin and becoming servants of God or in the genealogy of God, born again, ye have your fruit unto, unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Now that's something to shout about right there. That's something that whenever you're bound and tied to the wall and been beaten, you can stand there and sing praises to God. And when you praise God so much, I mean, you can change the life of somebody else. That's what it's going to take for your families to be saved, for you to praise God no matter what your circumstances is. I mean, what Paul and Silas did at the midnight hour affected the jailer, affected all the prisoners. And they were saved. Huh? Even when they got out, they released Paul and Silas. And when, when, when the next morning he preached to the family and they were saved. Whenever the, 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 the leaders of the city came, the, the, the jailer had to witness to what happened the night before. How God had intervened. I praise intervened for you somewhere. That somewhere, somewhere today, somewhere in your life, somewhere as you breathe your next breath, you breathe out the glory of God. Because I've come face to face with truth. Face to face with truth. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The way out. Supernatural. Spirit world. Go with me to, to John chapter 1 verse 3. We're going to close here in a minute. John, 1 John. 1 John chapter 3. I mean, to, to come to this awareness... I mean, at a time when God visited the world. You know, God has never departed. This is God's creation. All right? John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Have you beheld what manner of love God has bestowed upon us? 
I don't think you have. I don't think you fully understood how free indeed grace makes you. Huh? How free indeed your grace makes you. His grace makes you. Bestowed upon us that we should be called. Is that in your Bible? Huh? Let me, let me read it to you again. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Verse 2, Behold, how, behold now, beloved now, beloved now, are we the sons of God? Is there anything too hard for God? Hmm? Why? Why? We're created in the image of God. There's coming a time when the iniquity of the world is going to bring judgment on the world. But we're free from that judgment that's coming on the world. Just like the Jews were in bondage to, to, to Pharaoh in a place of Goshen where they could multiply. I mean, uh, I mean the oxymoron of the whole scenario is, is, is the picture of redemption. God's going to save us from something. Huh? And most of the time, God's going to save us from us because <laughs> we're our own worst enemy. Uh, we're our own worst enemy. <clears throat> How blind we are. How blind we are. <clears throat> Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. Huh? I'm going to look just like him. I'm going, you're going to be able to tell that I am a son of God Almighty because I'm going, to be, I'm going to be walking like him. I'm going to be talking like him. I'm going to be acting like him. I'm going to be doing the things he does because I am born of God. I am in the genealogy of God through the word of God. And I'll, I'm standing on his promises. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. I, I don't know. I got something to shout about. I, I can't imagine what pa Paul and Silas was feeling whenever they were singing and shouting. And I, I, I'm, I'm just going to say, I'm going to say when the earthquake came, when God showed up, they were not standing there shaking and trembling like the rest of them were not knowing what was going on. They knew exactly what was happening. They were ushering in the presence of God. And he was intervening. He was doing the supernatural. I mean, his I mean, he could break his laws. He's the only one that can break his laws. And we're, when we're in him, we're in the supernatural. You see, the disciples was in a stormy night in a boat, dark. Jesus came walking on the water. And Peter saw him. The other disciples saw him thinking he'd be a ghost. And Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come. And so Peter broke the law because the Lord said, come. You see, when resurrection comes, the law is going to be broken. You understand? You see, God broke the law that he placed on 
on the earth for me, October the 12th, 1986. He said, son, come on. I heard him. I heard him. I heard him speaking to me in my spirit. Beads of sweat popped out on me. And I couldn't wait for the sermon to be over where I could run to the altar in tears and brokenness. I came to the altar because I didn't have nowhere else I could turn because I was lost and undone and had no hope in life. But when he said, come, I came and I've been the chance. I've never been the same. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. Let me finish reading verse 2, and then you can do a song, and then I'm going to go to one more scripture, and we're going to close. Have I got time? Okay. And does not appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. <laughs> In the spirit, in the spirit, I see him as he is. In the spirit, John saw him as he is. Creator of all things. Redeemer of all things. His blood has power. I mean, if the blood of Abel could speak from the ground to God Almighty. Innocent. Abel's blood speaking to God and God recognizing it and coming to, 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 to Cain and saying, the blood of your innocent brother cries out to me. How much stronger is the voice of the blood of Jesus crying out into the eternals and it's not lost its strength yet. It's still ready to save, to redeem, to raise up, to be included in the genealogies of God that we might have something to praise God about. No matter what our circumstances is, you see, God gave me a way out. Just like he gave the Jews a way out of captivity and slavery. He gave them the law, the rule of God and man. 613 of them. And man has sure added and added and added. Go on, do that one. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. Because he went and reached way down and got this old low sinner man. I mean, I wasn't worth saving. I wasn't worth spitting on. I wasn't worth the bullet it would have took to shoot my brains out. But God saw something in me. He saw something in you or you wouldn't be here today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo! Seems like all I can see. Was destroyed. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Till I go. Hallelujah. 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 No, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. In shackles of all. the name of Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. How long Whoa. is this going to last? Glory. Hallelujah. Then you looked at this prisoner and you said to me, son, stop fighting a fight that's already been won. But 
you looked at this prisoner and said to me, son, stop fighting a fight that's already been won. Jesus is in darkness and can't be seen by the physical eye. It can't be seen by mortal man. It can only be seen by the redeemed. And once the blood is applied, the blood, the blood, the blood has resurrection power of Jesus. Resurrection power. The Holy Spirit can only see that blood. And when time comes and life goes on, what happens is the Holy Spirit is moving to and fro in the earth. And when, when one comes to a time that they finish their course, the Holy Spirit's there. Father's God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit's there. And so the Holy Spirit, the death angel, passes over those that the blood of Jesus is applied to, and man can't see that blood. Only the Holy Spirit. So I don't know, I don't see in the physical the blood on you. But I understand that you're born again by how I see you in righteousness. Righteousness as Abraham was given the blessing of God. The blood of Jesus foretold in Genesis 3. The seed of God. The seed of God. The seed of God. You see, the seed of God, the blood of Jesus, bruises the head. Bruises the head. You understand the significance of bruises the head? Jesus heal. Jesus heal. Destroyed the works of Satan. Huh? Huh? And so he said, put under your feet, put under your feet the works of Satan. The works of Satan can either be stumbling blocks or stepping stones. Huh? Mm. Go ahead and finish. Go ahead.
a new meaning to communion. It brings a new meaning to, to, to putting the blood, putting the, the body, the, the unleavened bread in you and, and taking the communion. It, it, it brings a new meaning to anointing yourself with oil that brings you into the supernatural. See, these are supernatural things that the physical eye don't see the purpose of because the, the blood's invisible to the to the to the naked eye. Only the spirit realm can see the blood that's applied to those that are redeemed. Let me, let me just finish up here today. In, 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 in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Huh? Paul just keeps on dishing it out. He keeps on giving revelation. He just keeps on giving meaning to a born-again life. I mean, he had everything going for him. He was a Pharisee's Pharisee. He was wealthy from a wealthy family. And, and here he gives it all up and counts as this nothing compared to what he got in Christ. And it says... Verse 15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. That's what I said a while ago. Fear ain't what shook the, 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 the jail and released Paul and Silas. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby, I mean, that tells you my genealogy. Huh? Puts me in the genealogy. Puts me in the household of God through Jesus Christ, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with the Spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, if so, we, uh, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. We need each other. Uh, we need each other to be glorified in the body. In the body. Verse 18 says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I mean, what's going to be revealed in us? It ain't going to be murmuring and complaining. It ain't going to be going around looking and finding fault with one another. It's going to be in the rejoicing and the praising of God for what he's done for us. Not I live, but he lives in me. Uh, revealed in us, him revealed in us, verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creation waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. What's wrong with us, church? What's wrong with us? Huh? Only you can, can, can judge yourself. That least ye be not judged of God. Waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, verse 20, for the creation was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who has subject, uh, have, has subject the same in hope. You see, God sowed Joseph 
into a pit. Raised him to a palace that he might save life. Huh? Why do you think he's called us? To rejoice and to celebrate being in the family of God. Sons of God. Sons and daughters of God. The same hope. Verse 21. Because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. God created it. God created us and put us in it. The most perfect place. And he calls it his footstool. It's the earth. And we're earthen vessels waiting to be opened up into the spiritual realm. I'm going to tell you, it's so important, it's so important that God got up this morning, came into the body of Christ, and anointed men and women to preach the resurrection of the dead all over the world that some might be saved. If you don't get anything out of this other than this fact, there's two genealogies. Human, spiritual. God's spiritual. So which one do you choose? Which one do you choose? Do you look at this as a history book or do you look at it as a genealogy book from Adam to David? Hutzel, not, not King David. From Adam to you. It's going to, I mean, it even tells you our end. It tells you our finish, you know. Tells you I finish. Let's all stand. We're going to close. I hope that I hope that you got something out of this today. I pray that as the week goes by, Satan doesn't steal it from you. I pray that 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 with the return of next Sunday, I mean, they they worship this Tuesday. They worship the golden calf. Three weeks later is the ninth of all. The witnesses came and said, we can't do it. You can either leave here and decide next week whether you can do it or you can't do it. God says you can do it. God says you can do it. And Paul says, I count everything I learned in the world's rule as nothing dumb. To gain Christ. And you can come back celebrating next Sunday. If you can't come back here, you can come somewhere and celebrate. Because Christ, Christ is worth it all. Amen. And if you don't have him, if you don't have him, then maybe our praise of him will break the chains, the bondages this world off of you that you too can say that you're joint heir with Christ Jesus Father we pray right now that everyone in the house knows you in the free pardon of sin Lord if they don't know you in the free pardon of sin if they don't realize who you are and who they are I pray that somehow or another you, you, you draw them by the spirit Lord, that they might be born to the Spirit, knowing the resurrection of Jesus Christ in them is life, and without Christ is death. We just claim souls for our labor. We give you the glory for all that's done. You're the only one that can save. And Lord, we pray you help us prepare the ground. The seed is sown in. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo, glory.